All right, we have already reviewed how to write functions for next loops, if then statements, and also how to create dynamic ranges in VBA. Now it's time to make some exercises, so feel free to pause the videos and try them on your own first, or you can just watch the code I write. Of course, the good thing about Excel is that everything can be done in many, many different ways. So I don't claim that my way of doing things is the correct one. In this lesson, we're going to practice examples of counting the number of cells within a range which meet a condition. And therefore, I will add a new module, which I will call counting. Uh, let's also change the name of this one to dynamic ranges. And let's start with something simple. Let's say I want to count how many times a player has scored more than 15 goals. Or more than or equal to 15 goals. So we can use the counted function, which has two arguments, the range of cells and the criteria. So for a range, we can make a reference to the cells between H2 and H6659. And or we can make a reference to the name range goals that we created in the previous lesson. And the criteria is going to be greater than or equal to 15. And Excel returns 205. So now let's write this in VBA and we are going to practice the countif function first. So in the new module, I will start writing a new subroutine which I will call count if example and apparently we're going to need the range and in the previous lesson we already created a range which holds a reference to all cells in column H between H2 and whatever the last row is so to avoid writing this from scratch, I'm going to copy this part and paste it here. I don't think I will need the penalties range, so I will delete this. And now we can write dbook.print and the counted function is an Excel worksheet function. So just to remind you, we can check anytime in the object browser if we are not sure which function is Excel worksheet or VBA. So I will write countif here and click enter. And apparently the countif is a member of Excel.worksheet function. So let's go back to the code. And that means that we can reference this function by writing application.worksheetfunction.countif. Unfortunately, we don't get any great tooltip here. But I can come back to the worksheet. And apparently, the first argument is the range. And then we have the criteria for this range. So here, we can make a reference to our object variable ghost range, comma, and the second argument is greater than or equal to 15. I will click run now, and in the immediate window, once again, we see the same result. Now, let's try to get the same result, but without using the built-in countif function. So now you can pause the video and write the code 
in an alternative way without using COUNTIF. Alright, I hope you tried this and now let me test it myself too. So I will start writing on a subroutine which I will call COUNT without COUNTIF probably not the best name that I can think of but anyway and I would like to declare a variable which I will call count by criteria and it is going to be of data type long integer so basically what we can do is to loop through all cells between h2 and h whatever the last row is and then we can check for each of these cells if the value is, is greater than or equal to 15 and anytime this condition is met we can increase this variable by 1 so that means that we will have to find the last row once again in this subroutine this is something that I believe I haven't mentioned but anytime we use the word dim to declare a variable inside a subroutine the scope of this variable is only within the relevant subroutine to illustrate this if I type in here goes rng.select when I click run now in this subroutine I will get a runtime error because in this subroutine the ghost RNG variable hasn't been declared so Excel doesn't know what it is and therefore in this subroutine I will also declare a variable called last row and let's find it here And I will need another variable which I will use as a counter. I will use x as long. And now we can write a for next loop. So I can write for x equals 2 because we are going to start from the second row to last row. Next x. And inside the loop, we need to reference the cells in column H. If range on column H on row X is greater than or equal to 15, then and if. And now we can write count by criteria control space equals whatever it is plus one and now let's step through the subroutine and I will scroll to the right side in order to see what's going on in the worksheet actually we need to print the result in the immediate window so of course outside the loop I will have to write debug.print count by criteria so now I will be clicking F8 in this subroutine and I can see here in the locals window the variables that we have their current value and their data type so now when I click F8, the last row is 6659. We know that this is correct. And now X is 2. So this expression references cell H2, which certainly is greater than 15. And therefore Excel will step to this line. And now 
the count by criteria value will increase with 1. And this process will be repeated until x becomes 6659. So at this stage I will click run and we can see the same number in the immediate window. Now you might be thinking using count if is much easier and I believe it is but what if I not only want to count how many times a football player has caught more than 15 goals what if I want to tag these cells also so let's say for each cell in this range where the value is greater than or equal to 15 I want to change the I want to make the font bold now if I have used the counted function that means that I will have to write my code from scratch while here all I need to do is that a, another line and I can write range h on row x dot actually not the value I need to use the font and then the both property and make this to true so now when I click run I can see that each cell in this range with a value of greater than 15 is in both font now I would like to undo this but from the previous section we know that once a macro has been started there isn't undo so therefore I will use the format painter and I will delete this line and let's check another example what if I now want to check how many times a player has scored more than or equal to 15 goals but at the same time not more than 3 penalties so of course in Excel there is a count ifs function which returns the number of cells which meet more than one condition so here we have we can make a reference to the range of cells between h2 and h 6659 and the criteria for this range will be greater than or equal to 15 and then we need a new range which is i2 to i 6659 and the criteria for this new range will be less than or equal to 3 Excel returns 141 now in VBA we can use the count ifs function but first we will have to declare a new range and then we will have to set it as well while in this example all we need to do is to add one more condition and one way to do so is to write here a nested if so we can write if range i because the penalties are in column i on row x that value is less than or equal to 3 then and we can close the if statement here and if and I will click tab here to indent and when I click run we should get the same result another way is by using the end function so I will comment this and instead of using nested if we can write and range i on row x that value 
is less than or equal to 3. Let's click Run. And once again, we get 141. Let's review another example. Let's check how many rows we have where the values in column C is, let's say, England, Germany or Italy. So we can use the COUNTIF function and the range is between the cells from C2 to C6659 and let's start with England and now I will copy this part and use it two more times and change this to Germany and here to Italy. So Excel returns 1559. Another way is to use an array formula and this is slightly more complex and we can write count if And the range is between C2 to C6659. And then for a criteria, I will write in the formula bar directly. We can open curly brackets. And we can provide these three values, Germany, England, and Italy. Close the curly brackets. And finally, we can we must wrap this in a sum function. But because this is an array formula, we cannot enter it with just clicking enter. We must click Control Shift and enter. And once again, Excel returns 1,559. Now, I still consider myself as a newcomer in teaching. And depending on the overall feedback and reviews and ratings that you, my friends, are going to give me, I might create another course on advanced using Excel functions and Excel formulas, including array formulas, because I believe they are a great weapon. But this is a VBA course above all. So let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor in order to write this. And I'm sure you guess already that all we need to do is to change the conditions here. So instead of writing this from scratch, I'm going to copy this part and paste it here. And I will change the name of the subroutine to count without count if two. And I will delete this comment. And like I said, all we need to do is to change the condition everything else should be the same. So the countries are in column C. That means that we can write if range on column C and row X that value equals Germany or now this is going to be a long line so I will press a space and underscore to carry on the same command on a new line or if the same range is England or once again range C on column X is Italy then and I can delete this empty line here and now we'll click run and we're getting the same result. So these are examples of counting results which meet a condition. In the next lesson, let's have examples with summing values.